But today I thought we'd take a look at the guard because they are fastly becoming, uh, you know, kind of NA's next maybe top tier team. We'll have to see. Uh, but they are, are very good that you know and we're gonna see how good they really are in the upcoming weeks as they play some of the some of the top teams in NA and see if they can compete with them but they definitely have been performing pretty well and Xset are no joke team themselves and uh, they dispatched of them so we're gonna take a look at the map on Haven and uh, we're gonna take a look at what the guard did and uh, one thing that stood out to me when I watched the guard is that they are extremely good at defending their defensive side is very 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 good and uh they won eight rounds here on Haven, which is a pretty good effort on Haven defensively. They won seven on Bind, even though they lost that map. And then they won 11 on Fracture. And this was the same team that 13 owed 100 Thieves as well on Ascent, winning 12 rounds on the defensive side. So extremely good defensive side. And that's because, you know, they have a very good communication. They don't take bad fights. And, uh, you know, they had very good protocols for what to do in certain situations. But there is another thing that's going to come out of this game as well that I don't think enough people talk about, which is that their aim on pretty much all of their players is absolutely cracked. And uh, that's going to come pretty big in this game. But let's take a look first off at round number three. So the guard have won the pistol in the next round. So they are on their bonus. And as you can see, there are four players stacked up here towards this A site and they have the killjoy utility basically scattered around the rest of the map uh you know to check if anything else is going on if anyone else goes to any of the other uh sites on the map but as you see exit are actually gonna you know start towards a but exit are just gonna hold here to start you know they are expecting some aggression and they're gonna get some aggression in fact so let's see how this plays out so uh as you can see uh, the guard start to make their way up as we look on the map here they start to make their way up towards this a and they end up in this position here they don't go too aggressive they aren't going to go peeking or anything like that but as cryo starts to move forward uh towards a lobby here he's going to end up in some trouble but exit are wise to it they expect that something might be going on here so they very wisely send this dart in and this dart, you know, basically is, is, is just for this area here to check if anyone has got really, you know, pushed up and been aggressive. And uh, luckily for them, Trent has been aggressive. And so at this point, he should be completely dead to rights. Ideally, I guess if he were set, it wouldn't be just Cryo. Cryo's kind of a bit on his own here, and that is going to cost them as well. Uh, and so Cryo is going to end up peaking this on his own, and unfortunately loses the fight to Trent, as I mentioned, that crack team. But... Again, the protocols of the guard are really good because as soon as Trent, you know, takes that fight and he wins that fight, the rest of the guard players are in here to support you. You have Sire player here supporting with his marshal from afar and uh, the Sky and the Astra are ready to get in there as well. So let's run it through and see what happens because we're going to get Sire player finds death as well with his marshal, headshot, crack dame. Um, and as you can see, the Astra and the Sky are in here as well. They get the trade on BCJ and all of a sudden it's a 4v2. Now it isn't going to go that great for them from this point. Jonah Peace Flash is going to unfortunately flash his own teammate and he is going to die there to Zekken. And so now we're in a 3v2 and after some, you know, light sparring between the two, we get the drone here, we get the knives from Sire players you can see and, and some, you know, bit of trader utility. Everything begins to settle down and eventually what's going to happen is Trent and Sire player are going to retreat. And I actually really, really like this move. They know that they still don't have the gun advantage. Trent is on very low HP as well. So they know it's not great. But if they retreat and they can get out, now these two players have to be super paranoid about if they go towards A, they have to, you know, check every corner. There's only 50 seconds left at this point. They're going to have to walk up, check every corner. And if they go anywhere else, they have no idea where the Kildre is. You know, so they're gonna they're gonna have to be a bit wary of it there as well. Now they do have some cipher utility, which is gonna tell them perhaps the killjoy isn't pushed up. But as soon as they start to go towards the site, they have to be you know really concerned that in any corner at any point in the map, the killjoy could be there. Uh, and so it, it it's a stressful situation here for the two except players. Now, as we run this forward, what's gonna eventually happen is they do make their way here towards uh, long A. And uh, what happened is Trent came up here. And uh, he's playing short with his Spectre. He decided to sort of re-aggress here. And, a bench and at first, uh, the guard had a kind of dual setup here. A little bait with the Jets standing on top of this box, hoping that they would come there and die to Trent on the short, not expecting to him. The guard set up a lot of traps defensively. But as we see here, what we're going to get is this fight here. Again, the except players are, are perhaps a bit far apart, but they are eventually going to find the trade with Aaron. And so it's a 2v1. And here we go again. Trent now, there's only 27 seconds left. He knows that where Aaron is, uh, and he could peek, but he doesn't. 
He's going to wait. He knows that he's in a 2v1. And that his Killjoy can come and pick up a gun on the way back as well. And the Killjoy has full armor and all of that. So Trent waits. He decides to just wait in short for his teammate. Now he darts. And I just want to pick this up as well. He darts. But he, look. Look at this. He pings exactly. He knows exactly. This Cypher could be in this location. Because of where this dart is. He knows that it's possible for the Cypher to potentially avoid. And so he pings it on the map. And I, and I just love that because it just shows, again, that awareness, that knowledge. And then, so they start checking their corners. They come on the site. And then we're going to get, again, this great little jump bait. They find him. And then Neth is able to find the kill. And again, just those those traps, those setups, the understanding, the map awareness, the cracked aim. It was all there in this round. And we're going to see some more examples of it now. So now let's come to round number six. And I talked about those traps. Well, we've got another one here, but it's actually not going to go the guard's way. For the, f the one of the rare times, actually, I would say, they're going to make a pretty big botched decision making here towards this A long side. But there's a drone coming up A short, as you can see. And uh, the Astra here knows, well, you know, my two teammates are here watching long. The drone is coming up short. They could hear it from here. So the Astra decides to make the quick rotation as well. Again, just good understanding of what their team is doing in each scenario. So let's run it through from here because we are going to see a bit of a botch here. Jonah just takes this peek and you know, it kind of ruins what they're going for. And Sire Player, you know, makes the mistake of the dash there. I don't know why he went also for the orb. But at the same time, uh, Valen has been able to find Cryo, who perhaps was expecting, you know, oh, there's two here. That means that this is probably free and I can get a free kill. But Valen, again, understood what was going on, gets that quick rotation, gets that kill, uh, does very well. But we're in a 4v4, so, you know, still winnable for both sides. Let's take a look at what happens. So Jonah flashes there. But what I want you to watch now is... He had made a bad decision before, but now he's going to make the correct decision because what's going to happen is the Seekers are going to come in, a Dart's going to come in, the Cypher ult is going to come in, and he's going to know in that moment, I can't just sit here because I'm going to die. He gets super aggressive, throws that flash, and gets two kills. Pretty much solo helps them win the round because now the other two except players are here on long and so when they come up they're going to have to deal with him as well as the other people on the site who are of course on their way now as well and so as we run this forward that's exactly what is going to happen uh because he is going to die here jonah p he is going to die at the back of the site but because they have to waste time doing that it ends up with aaron in a 1v3 and uh, eventually they kill him as well so again just more of the god making the right choices even though at first you know they did make one of their rare mistakes they made up for it with a great choice there from jonah p deciding i need to be aggressive in this moment you know otherwise i'm just gonna die and so he made the right aggressive play and ended up getting two kills for it as well and now let's watch round number eight and this is going to be another a hit i didn't purposely make it all a hit but uh it seems that that's just the way it's going so this time we have the killjoy utility on a but we're going to get a fast take from exit towards this a site and that that's looking pretty good for them right there's only the sky here with some of the killjoy utility you'd think that this would be going pretty well for them but uh, we're going to see some things. The first thing we're going to see is this cryo dash. Now, that's going to come back to haunt them. I personally don't like that dash at all. I feel like, you know, the jet dashes can be used a lot better than just for that little area that you can just smoke and run through anyway. It also, you know, you can hear the dash if you're someone sitting here on short and you can hear what they're going to do. And so if someone dashes like that, you probably know it's going to be a pretty quick uh, execute as well. And so you can see that the Astra and the Kiltra are already on their way because who would dash there unless it was going to be super fast? And you're going to see that that's going to end up costing them as well. So anyway, they do end up getting there pretty fast and Jonah P here, you know, gets dogged. The Astra wall comes in towards the backside and he's going to get so overalted. And this is just a super difficult position to be in. You know, he has to try and dodge all of the, the silver utility. Eventually, he gets flashed as well, and he dies. Okay, but from this point on, what we've got on the map is we have two players here for uh, the guard, and they're pretty much completely on their own. They do still have the uh, Killjoy utility up, some of it at least, so that will help a bit, but, you know, they're in a pretty bad situation. But let's see how it plays out, because I talked about that correct aim. Well, let's take a look. So, Net gets one, Valen gets one, Valen gets another, Net gets another, all of a sudden, they're in a 4v1. And uh, this is what I talked about a couple of reasons, right? I don't love the jet dash using it there because, I mean, it, it's obvious saying this in hindsight, right? With what happened. But it did mean that they had no way of creating the space once they'd got to that point, right? That no one, once they got to this point, no one got past here. You know, whereas if Cryo has the smoke dash and he goes over here... Then, you know, Net has to look over here. Valen is now fighting someone close to him on the box. It probably goes a bit differently. And so 
that's why I personally don't like that dash because it, it feels like there's going to be a better use of it than that. Uh, you know, this is a more important point for me to use that dash. Personally, that's what I would say. But again, we just saw the, you know, again, the understanding jet dash there. It must be a fast execute. Let's go. You know, just full quick rotate onto the site. They were already there straight away. And uh, then just the correct aim. And we can watch it again. You know, just winning fights. Just straight up winning fights. The turrets caused a bit of a delay as well. And, and it's like, what can you do, right? And they end up killing BCJ, of course, in the 4v1. And, and they win the round. So now let's come to the very next round. And so this time it's more of a C lean from Xset. Again, we've got this Killjoy utility all across B and Garage. Uh, and we got a bit of a stack towards C. Again, it seems like they just knew exactly what was going to come in from the other side. We got the Cypher Cam here looking down here, I guess checking for an op. Uh, that turns out to not be enough from Xset. And we also got the Sky Dog coming down here to delay any push there as well. So let's see how this round plays out, shall we? So, there we go, we get the dog down, and uh, we get the destruction of the camera as well, and uh, I don't think that this camera saw that there was an up on this site, and uh, that's going to be proven pretty pretty soon, because, uh, well, they tried to jump peek it as well, but Sire Player just uh, takes him out still with the up. But, as we can see, uh, there is still, you know, they've, they've kind of lost garage control here, and there's, and there's a big stack coming towards garage. But again, it's all about understanding and setting traps and the knowledge. They have an op here, right? So what's going to happen here is John P is just going to actually walk down here, which seems like a ludicrous play and, and is just absolutely crazy, right? Because they don't know if there is someone else down there as well. There very well could be, but he knows he has the support of the op. So he knows that this person probably isn't going to just dry peek out there, which allows him the time to get down there, and that's going to win them this round, as we will see. So Sire Player falls off, but he's still watching the long angle. And uh, Jonah P, here we go, goes on his walk down as uh, they start to make this hit onto the site. Uh, you know, and they're struggling on site. Jonah P gets BCJ for absolutely free because why would you expect anyone to be there? Um, and uh, then uh, Jonah P is just going to turn around eventually. And, you know, it, I guess the communication just wasn't there. But I think the surprise factor is so much that even if BCG, BCJ was telling them, oh, quick, quick, there's someone like uh, up long. Like, I'm not sure that they even had the time to process that that would be a possibility. Like, it's such, it's so out of the realms of possibility that someone could be there that I think even if it was communicated to uh, Def and Zek in there, I don't think they would have had a chance to react quick enough and understand and process that information because you just aren't expecting it at all. And this is what I mean, you know, the extra traps, they they were in a, a potentially bad situation there, but the understanding of, you know, you just got to kill with an op, no one else is, is just like walking straight into the op before, you know, that full hit comes in. So that's going to give John P the time to just walk into a position where they can't expect him to be in and then Cryo dies as well to net again just headshots you know it's just it's just headshots all around and uh it, it's just insanely well done from the guard and this was like their defense the whole way through it was just like to beat this defensive side you had to play really really well and catch them off guard a lot because it was just constant traps it was like on the fly setting up traps it was just the full understanding and then also the correct aim but I don't want this to just be about their defensive side. Let's take a look at the winning round, the round from the attacking side, because again, this just showed some uh, really cool like thing that they did. Uh, so we'll see what they do. So they're a bit spread out here, but they are going to start to make a bit of a garage hit here, and then we'll see what happens from there. So here we go. We can see we got an op on C long. It's it's pretty much a full gun round. I think there's one bulldog on the side of X set. Yeah, but other than that, it, it's a as full gun round as you can get aside from that. So. You know, could go either way this round. It's 12 to 7. They dog into garage. They take a look around. No one's there. Okay, they feel good. Obviously, they smoked it off. And the idea behind this garage push with, you know, the multiple people is just to get this Killjoy lockdown down. Now, this Killjoy lockdown is in an interesting place, right? And I've seen multiple teams do this because, obviously, it doesn't fully cover the C site. But it makes you know where they're going to be on C site. But it's also in a bit of a risky position. Because, you know... This could, if you lose garage control, if there isn't like a full, you know, stack of you like there is here, you know, you could lose garage control and someone might try and make a play to try and destroy it. And that is what's going to happen as well. But basically the idea behind this lockdown is like, we're going to go see and you have to be trapped in this corner. Like we know where you're going to be uh, because, you know, this is so, like, these are so far away from C that, you know, that's going to give us a lot of time and a lot of space to do whatever we want on C. 
But of course, both teams know that. So as we play this forward, what's going to happen is the sky here from Exet is going to try and play a bit more risky uh, and, you know, die for it. I guess the smoke dissipated on them, which was a bit unfortunate. They found themselves in this corner with the smoke gone. But as you can see, as we go to the map here, uh, the Sova, you know, is trying to avoid the Kildra lockdown, trying to get in this corner. But the Guard, they aren't going C. They're going B. Uh, and even though it doesn't actually start off that well for them as they go to B, as we will soon see, uh, they are going to manage to make it work. So they're, in fact, going to go to C. But Aaron there, you know, he had his uh, Cypher trip set up there. And uh, he's going to actually find another kill here with the flash through the smoke. The Sky not really understanding where he was. And now we get the Cypher ult as well. They do trade it out. But okay, 3v3. Uh, and we have the Astro ult as well from Xset. So the Astro ult going across there, which means they're going to have to fight it on the site. And they know where the players are because they just got the Cypher ult as well. So it's it's not a great situation. It's probably favored for Xset in that uh, in that moment. But as I said, these players are just cracked and they just hit a lot of shots. So uh, that's what we're going to see is Net gets one, Net gets two. And uh, then it's 3v1 all of a sudden. And uh, Net's going to take a, a look around. But eventually it'll be Sire player who gets him. But those were the kills, right? It's this. What Net just did there. This happens so often where just like they would get two out of nowhere like when you should only get one they would get two and look at that aim why can't i aim like that like that is what it just constantly was and this is why the guard you know are a, are an ascending team because they they clearly have a good team chemistry they seem to you know play off each other very well and uh yeah and it helps when you're all just cracked like they are and uh, can just hit heads like it's the easiest thing in the world uh, so yeah, that was the guard, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to see what they do in the future, because I think, you know, they have some really, really solid players.